Hi there, my name is Rachel. Welcome to our math mini series called Is It Proportional? A series of videos where we will explore proportional reasoning. In this series, we're going to take a look at three big questions. What is proportional reasoning? Why does it matter? And is it proportional? We're gonna be asking ourselves that question a lot throughout these next few videos. But before we dive into what is proportional reasoning and is it proportional, let's take a look at where we can find proportional reasoning outside of a math textbook. First of all, we have here a speed limit sign. In Canada, we measure speed in kilometers per hour. Over here, you'll see a recipe for sugar cookies, and you would use proportional reasoning if, say, you were hosting a big party and wanted to double or triple the amount of cookies that you were making. Up here, you see an example of proportional reasoning you probably have already observed on social media without even realizing it's proportional reasoning. So, for example, if you've ever been on Instagram and you're th scrolling through and you watch an Instagram reel, it appears full screen as a 9 by 16 video. However, if you're scrolling through someone's feed or their profile, you'll actually see the reel sort of cut up into a smaller square shape, which is this one by one. And the top and the bottom of the video actually get cut off, but when you click to make it full screen, the nine by 16, you can see the full piece. This is called aspect ratio. And we're gonna chat a little bit more about this kind of proportional reasoning in our final video of the series. One more example of proportional reasoning you may see in your daily life is something like a heart rate monitor. Uh, this might be on a fitness app or a watch or something like that. And heart rate is measured in beats per minute. And we use these beats per minute to give us a sense of exertion, activity level, uh, or all kinds of other data that we might collect. So we've seen some examples of proportional reasoning that we encounter in our daily lives. So now let's work on an official definition of what proportional reasoning actually means. Formally, we would describe proportional reasoning as the understanding of the multiplicative relationship between quantities. Okay, now let's break this down. Multiplicative, uh, this is obviously, uh, we recognize the root word here of multiplication. So multiplication is gonna come into play whenever we're talking about proportional reasoning. We also see the word here, relationship, and that means that the two quantities are connected in some way. So if something happens to one of the quantities, it increases or it decreases, something's also going to happen to the other quantity. So they have a relationship, something happens to one, it's going to happen to the other, and that relationship is multiplicative. Let's look at a super simple example here. Let's pretend this animal class is having a skating party and their teacher's looking to rent skates for everyone so they can participate. So if one student attends, they need to rent two skates. Now, if a second student attends, they are going to need to rent four skates. Of course, if a third student attends, you got it, six skates, no problem here. Now, this is what is key. You might on a pattern like this with familiar uh, numbers, you might think, oh, cool, yeah, you just add two more skates for every kid that comes, no problem. But remember, we said the proportional relationships are multiplicative, meaning they involve multiplication. So we will need two skates for every one student who attends, or one student equals two skates, means the same thing. So if we think about this multiplicatively, if there are 10 students coming, we need two skates for every 10 students, or two skates times 10. That, of course, means if 10 students attend, we will need to rent 20 skates. So again, we're getting that multiplication in there. Okay, let's look at another example of proportions. This one is a personal favorite. This is my mom's mustard sauce, which we serve with ham dinner, and it is my absolute favorite. So here's the recipe to make four servings. You need a half a cup of sugar, one egg, a third a cup of vinegar, and three teaspoons of dry mustard. Now for the sauce to taste just like when my mom used to make it, I need to keep all of the ingredients in proportion. 
This means if I add half a cup of sugar to the sauce, I need to make sure that there's three teaspoons of dry mustard. Uh, trust me, I once made this proportional error, uh, but I added three tablespoons of dry mustard, which is a much larger amount. Uh, and let me just tell you, it tasted absolutely disgusting. So proportions matter if I want to increase or decrease the amount of sauce I'm making. So if I'm having a big group for supper, uh, let's say I want to have eight people over, I'm going to need to double the recipe. But if I double the recipe, I need to make sure that I double all of the ingredients. If I mess any of that up, this sauce will taste way too bitter, too much vinegar or too much dry mustard, or way too sweet if I add too much sugar. Let's give this a go. If we decide we're going to double the recipe, that means that I am multiplying by two. Remember, we talked about if it's proportional, this is a proportion. We talked about recipes being proportional. It's got to be a multiplicative relationship. So let's walk through this. Four servings times two would give me eight servings. Easy. Awesome. Now let's double or multiply by two all of the ingredients as well. So half a cup of sugar times two. So a half and a half, two halves is a whole, that's one cup of sugar. One egg times two is of course two eggs. A third cup of vinegar times two is a third and a third or two thirds. So two thirds of a cup of vinegar. And then three teaspoons of dry mustard times two, three times two is six teaspoons of dry mustard. Okay, so we've gone through and we've multiplied each of the ingredients by two. Let's jump back for a second to our definition of proportional reasoning. We said that proportional reasoning is understanding the multiplicative relationship between quantities. So we multiplied, we've got that under control. But this means that things will stay the same, not only eggs to eggs and sugar to sugar, which we've already calculated, but it should also be the same with the ratio of, let's say, vinegar to sugar or eggs to sugar or servings uh, to uh, eggs and that kind of thing. So it should be able to be proportional, not only ingredient to ingredient, but also within the recipe itself. Let's check to make sure that worked. Now, I am going to check with dry mustard because, as I mentioned before, the uh, overuse of dry mustard was a bit of a, a haunting experience. So let's double check to make sure that that's okay. So let's take a look. So if I'm making this recipe with four servings, I need three teaspoons of dry mustard. When we did our calculations, we found that eight servings means that I'll need six teaspoons of dry mustard. So if our calculations are correct, then these ratios, four to three, eight to six, should be the same or equivalent. So that's our question here is, is four to three, the ratio of four to three servings to dry mustard, the same as eight to six servings to dry mustard? Uh, let's decide, how are we going to decide if these two are equivalent? You know what, I see that that second uh, ratio is bigger than my first. I'm actually just going to make my first ratio a little bit bigger to see if they are the same. So I'm gonna multiply both sides of my ratio, both parts of my ratio by two. So four by two and three times two to see uh, what kind of a ratio that gives me. And of course that gives me eight to six. So I know that these two ratios are the same, which they should be if I did my math correctly, um, and I did. So that means that my sauce will taste the same if I make it for four people or if I make it for eight. So now that we have this common understanding of what proportional reasoning is, so that multiplicative relationship between quantities, we're gonna take the next three videos to look at different situations to determine if they are proportional. Now, obviously in this first video, we were giving the introductions to what is proportional reasoning in general. Uh, and so all of our situations were proportional and we talked about what that meant. Spoiler alert, not all of the situations in the next three videos will be proportional and we're gonna talk about why and why not. Let's put some of our learning to the test. Join me in the next video.